Ah, wonderful. I thought that I uh, would do this easier. <laughs> so I thought what I'll do is I'll just stand over this side. Sorry if you're over that side. So I don't have to actually look at Jonathan. All right? And uh, Joe. And the fact, I actually thought that after doing it at Redcliffe, I'd be normal. But I'm still abnormal. <laughs> All right? Uh, I want to welcome you. Today is a special day because we are going to celebrate and honour uh, Pastor Jonathan and Joe and their family and all that they have done here at Emerge Church. They have just been uh, incredible pastors, incredible friends, and uh, it, it has just been uh, wonderful to do life with them over the last six years. Now, I thought today I would tell you the real reason that Pastor Jonathan's going. Right? I, I've made it all spiritual and, and all of that. But the real reason is that Richmond beat the Crows in the grand final last year and I just can't stand looking at him anymore. Right? He's a mad, mad Richmond supporter. Totally mad. Right? And, uh, and I, just, I just can't deal with that. No, that's not actually true. To be honest, seeing how happy he was on that day was the only thing that got me through it. Right? <laughs> Because that was literally the only thing. So uh, it's just been uh, fantastic having Jonathan and Joe and the family. Really, and the family grew up here. You know, when Harper came here, she's just like two, right? Just a, a little kid. Owen's just five, I think. And so they've really got their formative years here in Brisbane. Uh, they, they came. Really what happened is that we needed to have a... Uh, a, a two I see, someone to kind of like just do stuff around the church. Was, things were growing and uh, we needed to do something. And I spoke to a guy named Tim from Adelaide and uh, said, why don't you uh, come and uh, have a look at being the two I see here. I don't know if you remember, but he came and preached here and uh, it, was, uh, it, it was good. And then he was umming and ahhing and I said, look, if you want to know what I'm like to work with, because first the two I see the pastor that you're working under probably is, is a big deal. If you want to know what it's like to work with, why don't you go and talk to Jonathan Benithan? He worked with me for a long time. He can tell you what I'm like. And uh, because I am, as I said before, not always completely just linear, right? So, uh, so he uh, uh, went and, and did that. And as Jonathan's having coffee with him there in Norwood, uh, at Chibo, probably was Norwood Chibo because there's only one place in Adelaide to have coffee. But, uh, but uh, uh, <laughs> so uh, it was at Chibo Norwood. He, he just goes, I want that job, right? <laughs> He's terrible to work for. It would be a terrible thing to know. He didn't say that. But uh, uh, he, uh, he said, I like that job. And so he actually spoke to Cameron Bennett and Cameron spoke to me. And uh, there were some political things going on at that time. So I thought, I'm not going to ask him. And, uh, but then he left the uh, church that he was at there and uh, he came down to uh, uh, Brisbane and on holiday. And I thought, I'm going to go talk with him about becoming the 2IC. On the drive there, someone from our church actually rang me and said, I believe that God has spoken to me and that I'm meant to be the 2IC at your church. And I'm like, well, he hasn't spoken to me, right? <laughs> right? So, uh, uh, and I, we just talked to Jonathan and he put some things and then after six weeks, he came back to me and said, yeah, we'd love to come and uh, we're going to come as a family. And really had heard from God to, uh, you know, become the, the two IC pastors here. And, and to be honest, since they come, that's when our church went from really running services to being a, a church, the way that church should be in a way that I would see church. And uh, Jonathan made things happen and Joe, they made things happen here at what has now become Emerge Church. And uh, really, uh, to be honest, in every area of the church, pretty much every area of the church since Jonathan came, we have doubled. We've just increased in every single area. And Jonathan really has bought the infrastructure. He bought the roads. He bought the, the trains. He bought the trains. He bought all the different ways that would make our church become a merged church and take us to the uh, destiny that we have. So really what our job is to do, all the different things, uh, all the different things uh, are, are really in place and it's now for us as a staff to actually uh, bring and deliver the infrastructure 
that uh, Jonathan and Joe have set up. So I'm just going to read some things. And I, I put this in my um, f- Facebook post yesterday. I just want to read it because Jonathan and Joe have just been great supporters of Nina and I in every single way. And that's an intangible. That enables us to bring vision and to bring faith and to bring direction to what God wants to do at the church. And Jonathan and Joe have done that every step of the way. Whether it's been through a building refurb, whether it's been through staff training, whether it's been through an unbelievably excellent uh, missions program and what we do there in Cambodia, uh, in every single area, whether it be the stage here, the musicians, the youth group, he's had input, input and impact into every one of those areas. He's always had my back. He's loyal, hardworking, capable, Godly, personable, and reliable. He has an others first attitude and a sense of humor that really is going to be missed a lot. There's so many one liners that he just comes up with at the most crazy times that make no sense at all. And later we're going to see a, a video. Apparently, he's a very great singer as well, or he thinks he is. Right? Uh, so we're going to see a video and, and see different things, but it's just been uh, fantastic. Uh, I've never had to doubt his ethics or his effort. We've done ministry together for a decade and we cannot replace or replicate what it is that Jonathan and Joe have brought to us. We're not just going to get, oh, let's try and find another fit to do that. We can't do that. We are going to actually stretch the staff that we have to do the roles and all the different things that he has done. But I want to tell you, we have great staff. We have a staff that have been set up for success. We have a staff that are ready to stretch into the new challenges that being part of a merged church is going to uh, require us to do. Essentially, when Redcliffe came on board, we were a little bit overstaffed. And so with Jonathan uh, going, and everyone now is just ready to stretch. You know, Neil and Julie coming on staff uh, have, have just been a fantastic, wonderful addition to, to who we are and to where we're going. So I actually have no fear about the future. I, I know that the staff have my back. I know they have Nina's back. I, 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 I actually have no fear of the future. I'm just sad that Jonathan's going, that Jonathan, my friend, not going to be here. And that's what it's like. You do friendship. You do life together. When you're in the ministry, your friends are really the people that you just work with and do life with. It's friendship through function. And we've just built a great friendship. It's, it's, it's like I think it and he does it. It's just amazing. It's just awesome. It's just wonderful. But it's the right time. I want to tell you, church, it's the right time. Like Corey's word was to Jonathan, it says he's come and done what was needed. And uh, we are going to have great days. We are going to go forward as a church. And a lot of it's going to be about what Jonathan and Joe have allowed us to set up and allowed us to do. I want you to stand. He's going to come and preach a great word. Come on, let's honour Jonathan as he comes to preach the word of the Lord. Sit down, sit down, sit down. It's all right. Thank you. Thank you. It's very, very kind. You know, it's, um, it's been funny this last, I guess, really month, you know, like just uh, having different conversations with people and, and listening to the staff talk and share. And, uh, and uh, there's always this thing of, um, of humor keeps coming up, right? And... Um, and uh, I've, I've never seen it before, past Nina, because I'm not, I'm godly, right? But uh, there was this show I heard of called The Office. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. You may have heard of it. I don't know, right? 
So, but one of the, the lead character in it, in the English one, is, is uh, David Brent, right? And so, if you've seen it, you know, so you probably haven't, I haven't, I just heard about it, right? <laughs> but there's this one line, right, when, they, when they're like in the show, they interview him, and he goes, and they're asking him, you know, like, because uh, he's the manager of the office, and they're like, oh, you know, what, what is it you do, and, you know, how do you, how do you, you know, lead the officers? And he goes, humour. I, I think, first and foremost, I bring humour, like, to his... That was my English accent, Julie. That was not too bad. Yorkshire. No? No? I'll keep, I'll keep practicing. I'll keep practicing. And his, his go-to line for running an office is, is uh, you know, is, is be a comedian first, I think is his line or, or something like that. So, uh, um, so, I, so I feel like David Brent. So, and I don't think that's a good thing. But... Um, um, I just want to, I do want to just thank some people. I, I am going to share with you today. I do because if you know me, you know church is never about me. It's never about, it's about Jesus and honoring his name. And, uh, and so, so I do have something that I want to share uh, with you today. And, uh, and I believe it's poignant to, to the morning and what's happening. Um, but I do also want to take this opportunity just to thank some people publicly. And, uh, you know, as... As Pastor Mark said, uh, it was six years ago we came. Uh, Harper was two, Owen was five. Joe and I were much younger. Um, I had much more hair, and um, and I'm sure that's not Pastor Mark's fault. But anyway, um, and and there's just been people along the along the way along that journey, um, those past six years, who've just, I guess, really blessed us as as a family. Uh, moving here was a was a big thing, and uh, but we felt it was what God wanted us to do, and so that was enough for us. And so we packed our bags and came here. And uh, and look, there's been hard times, there's been great times, but there's just been people along the way, along the journey, uh, who've just uh, who've just really blessed us. Um, I want to thank the the bishops um, for making us family. Uh, Mike and Lee, uh, Rochelle and Zane, uh, Lael, Jez, just all the, they just really brought us in. And uh, see Renee sitting back there. Remember going to your home for Christmas, opening up your home to us. Such a blessing. And um, we really appreciated that, going to kids' parties. When you got small kids and you move to a new place, it's, it's hard sometimes, but your openness to have us come around and feel part of your home and your family has just been such a blessing. And uh, I really want to honour you guys and appreciate you guys. Uh, uh, to Dean and Sue, down here, very much the same. Just made us feel like family and just included us. This year, again, at Christmas time, was a, I was able to spend a few hours there and just uh, just enjoy your company, Dean. I just love you, mate. You've just been a great friend and uh, enjoyed our many motorbike rides and time together. And I uh, just really appreciate you, your friendship. To uh, Rob uh, Camilleri, just appreciate his friendship uh, over the years. Oh, I can't see him right now, but uh, just thank you, uh, Rob. You know, Rob, I remember doing missions trips with Rob, and I got a little bit upset because everyone kept inviting Rob back and not me. And so uh, everyone wants Rob. And I'm like, hey, I'm the preacher pastor guy. You're supposed to invite me, but everyone invited Rob to come back. So, uh, so I don't do missions with him anymore. Um, it's not good for my ego. Uh, to, uh, to um, I'm looking because I can't see. To Kent, to Kent. I knew I saw you. I want to thank you for your support, for your prayer. It is so felt and appreciated in our lives. And uh, I thank you for... Just being someone of, of strength, um, just in little ways, and little conversations that I've always appreciated you and just your input and encouragement. Every time I come off the platform, you're one of the first to thank me and, and just encourage me in that, and that really has meant a lot to me. So I appreciate uh, you, Ken. Uh, love you and your family. Um, to Phil Hollands, I love you, man. I, I love uh, just your your friendship and just our constant catch-ups at Clean Skin, even when they're impromptu. 
and uh, I just uh, you, you'll just be missed. You've just been a, a great friend, and uh, and I really love you, mate. Um, and just to all the boys, to the Chays and the Jacks and the Fields down here, uh, to Nick, I saw at the back there somewhere, Hendrico, Caleb, uh, just just all the different guys um, who just uh, over the years have helped keep me young and just uh, just been great friends and uh, chat to me about basketball and things like that. And so uh, so just love you guys. And uh, look, just know that for each one of you guys, have got an amazing future. And uh, and and and. And if you know me, you know that my heart to be able to play a, somewhat a part in that, to see what God does in your lives in the future, just uh, is really the joy of why I do what I do. Um, I know Joe, personally, I'd like to thank uh, David and Audrey. I think I saw them here somewhere. David and Audrey. Did I see them somewhere? Maybe I didn't. Oh, here. I'm looking in the wrong section. Sorry, see, they don't even sit. They sit in the non-senior section. So, uh, but... Uh, Thank you for your kindness uh, to us over the years. I know Audrey Joe's really appreciated uh, with just sewing and just chatting and just your friendship with her. Um, she appreciated that. And uh, to Beck Stein as well. Um, I saw her here before. I think she might have just ducked out, but um, oh, she's at the back. Uh, Joe's really appreciated her time, just friendship with you and chats with you. And uh, Joe says to me, she's going to have coffee with Beck. And then three hours later, she comes back. And, and it's like uh, supposed to be quick catch-ups, but there you go. And uh, I know Joe would really like to thank uh, just all the mums and different uh, mums on the way. Jolene, Rachel, Abby, Diana, Claire and Kira, just, uh, just for your friendship and, uh, and just time and, and many, many others. Um, we just, we've just appreciated your church um, for just really accepting us and loving us. Um, I'd love to thank all the staff. I know it feels like an award ceremony, but please, it, it will get better. It will get better, all right. Uh, to Jenny and Steve. Uh, Jenny, uh, you're, a, you're a legend, Jenny. Just really uh, love you and your effort and your work and your, um, you know, you're not just about ticking the box when you're done, but you, your heart for the church and to see the church excel and, uh, and, and using your gifting in finance and organization. Just really appreciate you, uh, Jenny. And, uh, and, and for guiding me along the way at times when I needed guidance. I appreciate that too. Uh, to Sue, it's been great working with you, Sue. You know, Sue is a person of real conviction. Sue is like one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. And, uh, and so, um, Mum, being the sort of person that I am, I decided that, uh, that I'd make it my mission to try and make Sue stumble and fall, but I couldn't do it. I think the worst thing I could ever make Sue do was point at someone, and uh, that's about as good as it got because I just couldn't get, couldn't get her to do anything mean or nasty or, you know, anything like that at all because she's just, uh, she's just not in her. But uh, but Sue, love you guys and uh, love love your family. Uh, Nikki and Roger, uh, I think Nikki's probably upstairs with the kids now. You know, Nikki does an amazing, an amazing job uh, with our children's ministry. I remember Pastor Mark saying to me when I come when I came here going. Oh, one good thing is we've got a great children's ministry. He goes, it never gives me any worries. And, uh, and it's so true. Nikki is uh, very much like that. And uh, she just gets in and does it. And uh, also, I want to thank all our... If you're a kids worker here and you've looked after my kids, I want to thank you for that on Sunday. Uh, it, it frees me up to do the things that I need to do here on a Sunday. And it also uh, frees Joe as well to be able to uh, function too. And uh, so we just, uh, we just thank you uh, for taking the time to invest into our kids. Um, uh, David and Helen, uh, David obviously at, at Redcliffe, you know, I call David my Book of Luke buddy because uh, every time I preach, I seem to preach around the Book of Luke. And guess what? I'm going to speak from the Book of Luke a bit later. But um, uh, David's just been great, great encouragement. Uh, to Alex, love you, mate. Um, thank you for your fun. I, I honestly have no idea what you're talking about sometimes, but I love that about you. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. You know, earlier this week, I went with Alex and we went and saw Stuart. And, um, and it was great. I really enjoyed it, Alex. But, um, but Alex, you are such an example to me of... A loving husband, father, of a of a friend, and what going the extra mile is, and I just it's honestly you you spoken so much into my life, Alex, and the way that you live and conduct yourself that um, I, I can't express in words words, and I just just love you, Alex, uh, for who you are. 
seriously, I have no idea what you're talking about sometimes. So, uh, Selena and Luke, down here, I'm really sorry about the coffee. I hope the stain came out. Is it okay? Is it all right? I was at their house the other day, just catching up with them, and I literally like took a mug of coffee and threw it on the floor. It's basically what I did, right? And uh, I felt so bad. I came home and I told Joe, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. So um, is the carpet okay? Is everything worked out all right? Dad's solution worked, did it? Yeah, he's, uh, but, uh, but just, uh, just love you guys. Uh, Selena, um, obviously we worked together for a long time and excited about the new phase that, that God is uh, taking you guys as a couple. But for you uh, uniquely, Selena, uh, thank you for, um, for pushing me and uh, not allowing me to always cut corners. And, uh, but your you know, you're, you're want to, to, to do things right and at a high level uh, is just uh, fantastic, and and uh, and as I said at Redcliffe, you know, I know we shared a lot early, but I really felt like with you, I just pushed you in a direction, and you just ran with it. And honestly, what we enjoy here in terms of our praise and worship uh, comes from the foundation that you that you did, and uh, and you're just amazing. And I just love you guys and Luke. Uh, just loved your friendship, loved your chat, loved your input. You are such a smart and wise man. And uh, any chance I could draw anything from you, um, I, I love that opportunity. So thank you and, uh, and uh, have a great trip. You guys are going to have a, a great time coming up. It's really exciting for you guys. Uh, for Jason, uh, thank you for your friendship. Thanks for talking hoops with me and uh, listening to my, all my old school music that I think is really cool. <laughs> And I play for you. You look at me and go, yeah, man, that's great. Yeah, yeah, you know, like that. So, uh, so I really appreciate you, uh, you humoring me and, uh, and, and not, you know, not teasing me about my old music styles. But it's still cool though, right? So um, but love you, man, and, and really excited uh, to see where God takes you from here. And uh, you can be the new JB. So there you go. Um, to Jacinta. Where's Jacinta? Jacinta here. Jacinta and someone, but I'll leave that, I'll leave that black, I'll leave that blank, I'll leave that blank, is that bad? Okay, you can yell at me later, I love you Jacinta, you are, you're an excellent person, um, just so diligent and willing to make things work, and uh, so many times on a Monday, I'll just come and sit behind your desk and just go, so what are we doing? And what's happening again? And what's going on in the next couple of weeks? And you're just able to go, you know, A, B, C, D, we're doing this. And have you thought about that? And uh, make sure you get this done, you know. And uh, I've really appreciated uh, just your input, your friendship, and just your heart. You know, Jacinta is so much more than an administrator. You know, I remember coming here over Christmas, and I was putting up these stinking Christmas lights in here. And uh, I came in, and uh, I didn't have an attitude, but I came in <laughs> to do it. And as I come in to do it, I, I know your car was out there, and you were upstairs in the prayer room just seeking after God. And, uh, and that is your heart, because that, uh, that is who you are. And I just, it just really stood out to me. And so, uh, so I love you, Jacinta, and appreciate you in all that you do. Uh, Neil and Julie, uh, thank you guys for your love and support and your friendship. Um, it's been great getting to know you guys over this, no, it hasn't been a long time, but, uh, but I know that, uh, that our, our friendship will just continue to grow and uh, no doubt we'll cross paths more down the track and just, uh, just love you guys and uh, just really appreciate who you are. And to Joe and Yovana, thank you for your encouragement, your servant hearts. Joe, you're such a hard worker, like unbelievably hard worker. It's been a real pleasure to be able to input into your life, to watch you grow, to watch um, what God has done in your life. And, um, you know, it, if I can have some part to play in where God takes you guys in the future, then that, that, is my, that, that would be the greatest joy. And so really love and appreciate you guys and what God is doing in your life now. Um, now, one of the things that, um, that when we're in staff and we're doing things and, you know, like I always love to come up with an acronym, right? You know what an acronym is? You, know, you get like a word and you take the first letter from the word and you put like another word to it. It's pretty much the easiest thing you'll ever do, right? That's why I like it, right? Because it's so easy. And so, uh, so I've come up with an acronym for our staff 
All right, so you following me? So S, right, for staff, super hard workers, right? All you guys are super hard workers. T is for talented, right, We're very talented staff. Uh, A is for amazing memories, uh, so many great memories and just time together. Uh, like Jacinta always bidding Mark at bowling, it's just an amazing, <laughs> amazing memory. We don't go bowling anymore because Jacinta... <laughs> Jacinta beats all of us. It's amazing. Amazing memories and just time uh, away together. Um, just for all the fun. It's just been fun. And uh, just it's just been great fun. Uh, Tuesdays are like the best day of the week. Just look forward to uh, that time together that we have. And uh, for my last F, I've done Forever Friends. That's nice, isn't it? That's nice. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Seriously, acronyms are like, they're pathetic, but I like them. All right. I used to always do acronyms on my cards. You probably don't remember. I used to always do acronyms, mum. And, you know, my mum's here too. Do you want to just say hello to my mum? It's great to have my mum here. All right. Now to the Elmendorps. I want to thank Mark, Nina, Jack, Rachel, a.k.a. Chunky Monkey, and, uh, and Tori. Uh, words cannot express our gratitude towards you and your family. You've always made us feel warmed and welcome. Your kids readily embraced my kids so well. I'll never forget Jack getting on the floor with Owen and, the, and Rachel and Tori just chasing Harper around the house, letting Harper play her silly games. I think I have footage of you guys doing your dance party, which uh, will come out, I'm sure, the 21st one day, but I'll keep it under wraps for a little while. But, uh, but you guys will forever be the cousins to my kids. And Joe and I can't express how much we appreciate you guys doing that for our kids. It's, it just means the world. It means the world. Mark, your ability to release me and allow me to grow has just been amazing over the years. You applied enough pressure but gave me enough room to grow and to flourish. The opportunities for ministry and expression in all areas of church life have set me up for future ministry roles and whatever else God wants to do. You've truly been the father that you say that you want to be. Your relationship with Nina challenges me and examples me what a great ministry relationship looks like, but more importantly, what an internal connection and relationship you two have to each other. It's been such a an example to me. Your ability to recite animal facts and information astounds me every time. <laughs> Doesn't matter where we are, what we're doing. If there's an animal there, Mark knows something about it. It's, you, you test him. Test him after the service. You ask him any question. about. I need some tissues. I'm falling apart here. It's not going to be, be pretty. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Pardon me. Sorry, Mum. <laughs> Your love, friendship, support, encouragement, words of wisdom, desire to do right by people and by the call of God has all been impressed upon this heart and this spirit that I'm sure will produce fruit for many years to come. Thank you for playing a part in the story of Jonathan and Joe Benithan. We look forward to seeing you in Adelaide. All right, we're done. Okay, good. Let's preach, let's preach. Oh. It, really is, uh, it really is thankfulness is what we feel in our hearts right now and gratitude. Um, we're so thankful for God bringing us here. We're so thankful for the time that we've had here. And, uh, and we're so thankful for what we see God doing in our future, but also in the future of Emerge Church. You know, thankfulness and gratitude are an important part of any journey. You know, life, life is full of many chapters, chapters that open and close, and thankfulness and gratitude need to punctuate each one of those chapters. I am grateful for what has been, and I am thankful for what is to come. 
And I believe thankfulness and gratitude are intrinsically connected to joy and happiness. I've never met someone who is happy but not thankful. Thankfulness and gratitude are tied to happiness and joy. So we need to live lives that are thankful. In the book of Psalms, Psalms 100, the Bible says this. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving in your heart. Enter his courts with praise. That, that old song that we used to sing has been uh, going through my head and my spirit for the last two or three weeks. And I guess it makes sense considering the season and the time that we're going through that we are to be thankful and grateful for all that God has done. You know, this passage itself is speaking directly into, it's speaking about coming into the temple. And so as the, uh, the children of Israel would ascend to the temple, as we're hearing about, as they would go up, that they would come to the gates, and the gates was the entry point into the presence of God, into the temple where His presence was. And so we see thankfulness as an entry point. Thankfulness is a gateway into the presence of God. So for us today, it means that there is something of thankfulness and gratitude that brings us into the presence of God. Thanksgiving is the gate to prepare your heart for His presence. You know, if you've been coming here on a Sunday and maybe praise and worship or some of those times it's been a struggle to engage fully with the presence of God, then I would ask you, are you thankful? Are you grateful? Because maybe that is the barrier, maybe that's the gate that you're not walking through in order to enter into the presence of God. See, my question to you today is, are you thankful? Are you thankful? And, and if you are thankful today, then I'll ask you, are you thankful first? Because who knows, it's easy to be thankful after the fact. It's, it's easy to be thankful once you've gone through and, and God's come through or something good's happened, you're going, yeah, I'm thankful. But are you thankful at the beginning? Are you thankful first? You see, the Scripture says, uh, I will enter His gates with thanksgiving. It doesn't say, I'll go out the back door with thanksgiving. It doesn't say, when, I, when I've done in the presence of God, as I make my way out, I'll be thankful. It says, no, right at the entry point, right at the start, it will be with thanksgiving and praise on my mouth that I will enter into his presence. Is thankfulness first in your heart and in your mind towards God? Or do you need him to do something first? It's a challenge for us. You know, Luke 17 verse 11 says, On the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along Samaria in Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he is a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return to give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Thankfulness means something to Jesus. Thankfulness is a deal to Jesus. See, thankfulness was such a deal to him that we see in this passage, it was, it was the thing that piqued his interest. It was the thing, it was the question that he asked is, well, were there, were there not, where are the other nine? Was there not ten? Where, how come only this one has come back to give thanks? See, thankfulness is important to Jesus. You know, it can be so easy to read Scripture and to think of someone else in mind. It'd be so easy to read something in Scripture and think of other people. But I don't know about you, but I would hate to be one of the nine. I would hate to be one of the, I would hate to be one of the people who missed out on not giving thanks. But how many times have you been the nine without realizing it? How many times have you gone through a day without thanking Jesus? How many situations and things have you gone through, aware or unaware, that you have not stopped to go back and give thanks to God? See, I would hate to be one of the nine. 
So I think sometimes we become one of the nine because we are less aware of our brokenness and because we become more comfortable with what's going on around us. You see, these nine lost their awareness of their brokenness and were comfortable with where they were going and what was happening that they forgot to give thanks. So this morning, I just want us just to quickly go through the Scripture. I'm just going to break it down because, just verse by verse, because that's what Pastor Mark would do. So that's what we're going to do. So verse 11, it said, And on the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. You know, I remember reading this passage uh, many years ago, and this verse always jumped out at me. Because it, it, it puts to me the question of, am I prepared to walk along the border to find the lost and the broken? You see, Galilee speaks so much of, of call and purpose and miracles and so many good things happen in, in Galilee and the Sea of Galilee. We see so much happening there. Yes, Samaria is the place of, 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 uh, of, of the world. It's the place of separation from God. It's, it's a people who are different from, from the ones that Jesus was sent, was sent to. And, and we, we see that there. And so we see this representation of the world and Galilee being the representation of the presence and the moving of God. And so it always made me think that, you know what, we need to be prepared to go to the borders to rescue the people who are crying out for help, to rescue the people who need saving. You know, there's so many broken, desolate people out there living without hope, but they need someone to go to the border and fetch them in. You know, I think of the, the, the parable of the prodigal son, we see a father who went to the border every day. He went to the gate. He went to the edges, to the fringes every day, looking for his lost son. And it paints such a picture for us as the church, as Christians, that we need to go to the border. We need to go to the fringes, to the edges, to look for the lost sons and daughters. We need to be the church that he called us to be. You know, let us, let us never ever become a place where we live too much insular, where we live too much on the inside that we forget to go to the borders, that we neglect to go to the borders because we're too comfortable where we are. We need to go to the edges, go to those fringes, find the people who are broken, who are without hope and call them in as sons and daughters. Now verse 12 goes on and it says, And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance. You know, this is a requirement of the law to stand at a distance. This is a requirement of, of, of what they were told to do. You couldn't go too close. You couldn't, you couldn't get too near. Their brokenness limited their access to Jesus. Their brokenness created a distance between them and him. But who knows that Jesus' mission was to remove that distance. Jesus' death on that cross, in that moment right there, he totally annihilated, I was going to say abridulated, but he didn't come out right, so I'm just going to move on. Got rid of the distance between us and Jesus. It totally got rid of that that distance that is there by brokenness, that is there because of sin, that is there because of we can't do it in ourselves, Jesus removes that gap. Amen? We have full access through Jesus. Then it says in verse 13, And they lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. You see, these lepers recognized Jesus. They knew his position when they called him Master. And they appeal to his nature when they ask for mercy. They recognize Jesus. They, they, they knew his position and they appeal to his nature. You know, leprosy is, is a terrible disease. There was the obvious outward signs of leprosy that would have been all over their bodies. But the disease would also affect things like their voice and their throat. Uh, the, the disease would, would effectively... Uh, it'd be like having a never-ending sore throat. Like it'd be like uh, you know, have you ever lost your voice? You know, like when you, and you go to talk and it's just like, <laughs> and you kind of feel like that. 
emphysema. You know, you kind of feel like that, right? This, this is what their voices would have been like. It, it would have been hard for them to cry out. It would, have, it would have taken effort for them to cry out to Jesus. But you know what I've learned along the way? Is that it's not so much about my ability to cry out, but it's about the one who's listening. And I'm so glad that it's not that, that the one listening isn't dependent upon my ability to cry out. You know, that, that, my, that how I'm able to do that, whether there's a, there's a strong sound in my voice or whether it's a struggle, whether my voice is dry and hurting and it's broken and, it, and it's painful or whatever it is, it's not actually about my, my voice and my ability to cry out, but it's about the one who hears. It's about Jesus and the fact that He hears us. I'm so thankful that Jesus hears us when we cry out. That he listens to us. To the races, someone? Yep, okay. All right. Brilliant. Verse 14 says, When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Healing and breakthrough comes when you are faithful and obedient to the word of God. Jesus said, Go show yourselves to the priest. They said, let's go. They were obedient to his word. They believed his word. They had faith in what he had said. And the healing came. Their healing and breakthrough occurred when they were faithful and obedient. And it's so true to our lives as well. We need to be faithful and obedient to the word of God. Faithful and obedient to the principles that he has laid out for us and how we should live and conduct our lives. That's where healing and breakthrough comes from. And it says this in verse 15. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving them thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. There was a change. There was a change that occurred in this man. And his first response, the first thing that he thought to do, was to return and give thanks. The Bible says that he was healed, turned around, and he prays with a loud voice. Does anyone else here today have a similar story like that? Has God healed you? Has God healed you of your sin, of your shame? Has God healed you of your brokenness? Has he given you hope and a purpose for living? Has God healed you today? You know, the Bible says that he turned around. You know, that's a picture for us of repentance. He turns our life around. Repentance is simply that I was going one way, but God came in and it caused me to turn around and now I'm going a different way. Who knows that our life trajectory was on a different path, that we were going to a different place, but we encounter Jesus. He turns us around and now we're going a different way to a different place to be with Him. Amen? This is a picture of what God does for us. He heals us. He sets us free. He turns us around. We repent and we go a different way. And then we praise Him with a loud voice. Then we praise Him with thanks. We lift, we go to Jesus and we say, thank you. Thank you. You The scripture says that He fell at His feet. That's a sign of complete surrender. And He gives Him thanks. Friend, if you would live your life surrendered and thankful, can I tell you that right there is a recipe for a great life? That right, those simple, those two simple things right there. Live your life submitted to Him and live your life giving thanks to Him. That is a recipe for great living. That is a great way to live, giving thanks to Jesus. Verse 17 says, Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return to give praise to God except this foreigner? He said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. You know, I tell you, that Samaritan received so much more that day than the other nine did. He received relationship with Jesus. You know, Jesus is the only true source of contentment. He's the only true source of comfort. And he's the only true source of challenge that you'll ever need in your life. And what was it that brought this one back? What was the gate? What was the entry? What was the motivation that brought this one back? It was thankfulness and it was gratitude. 
What, maybe a better way of putting it is, is what did the other nine not have? What did the other nine lack? They lacked thankfulness and gratitude. It was thankfulness and gratitude that brought this foreigner into a closer relationship with Jesus and a greater experience of his love and his power more than the other nine ever could. You know, the Bible says that the Samaritan, that his voice in, uh, in verse 15, says he turned back praising God with a loud voice and gave thanks. The sound of his voice was loud and it was clear. It was a loud and clear thank you. So my question to you today is, is your life a loud and clear thank you to Jesus? Can someone look at your life and see a loud and clear thank you to Jesus? Does your life speak beyond itself? And does it give a loud and clear thank you to him? Friend, we need to give a loud and clear thank you to Jesus. Can I tell you today, you know, we... The world has gone crazy. Like, honestly, I, I get sick of watching the news and listening to the radio. It's just, it's just gone nuts, right? Can I tell you, one of the messages that the world needs to hear is one of your gratitude to God. That it's actually a gateway into His presence. It, it's, it's actually a gateway that people need to see and recognize. See, it was this Samaritan, this foreigner's thankfulness that brought him into closer relationship with Jesus. So our lives need to be a life that, that shouts thankfulness to God because that would be a loud and clear message to a world that need hope, to a world that needs to know that there is a Saviour. That there is someone who can take your brokenness. There is someone who can heal you of your sin and shame. There's someone who can take the things that are wrong in your life and turn them around and bring you to a place of full surrender and thankfulness to Jesus. See, our lives need to be a clear thank you, not just for the sake of Jesus, but for the sake of others that He has placed around us. Our thank you is a testimony to His goodness and His grace and His love. We need to be thankful. We need to be thankful. I just want to invite you right now just to just close your eyes and bow your heads right where you're sitting. You know, today, my appeal to you today is simple. You know, I, I've had many good things in my life, many blessings. Great church, great friends, great leadership. I grew up in an outstanding family. I have an amazing wife, beautiful children. But can I tell you the single biggest thing I'm most thankful for is my Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the single biggest thing in my life that makes all the difference. And maybe you're here today and you need someone to make a difference in your life. Can I tell you, you won't find that in any other place but Jesus. So maybe today you're here and you'd like to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You'd like to be like this Samaritan, this leper who turned back and went to Jesus. Maybe you're here today and you'd like to go to Jesus. Friend, I want to help you do that today. I want to be able to pray with you today. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as surrender and give thanks. That The gospel is right there. Surrender and give thanks. Friend, that's all you need today. To experience the greatest person you'll ever need, the greatest thing you'll ever need in your life. That is Jesus Christ. So if that's you, I want to ask you to simply raise your hand where you're seating. Just so I can see you, I'd love to pray for you today. Anyone here today? 
you don't know Jesus, but you'd like to begin a relationship with him, just as I look across the room, I'd love to pray for you right now. Anyone at all? Would you say you're sitting there with your eyes closed? Church, I'd love to just pray for you right now. Father, I just pray. Father, I thank you for these people. I thank you for this church. I thank you that the best days are ahead. I thank you that what you're doing here is you've laid a foundation. You've laid a foundation to be built upon by the people that are here and now. Because there's a community and there is a people out there who need a merged church to be the church that you've called it to be. That there are people out there who need this place to rise up in the community and be the lighthouse that you have destined it to be. So Father, I pray your blessing upon every single family here and every single person. Father, I pray for children right now who aren't in church today. Father, I pray that you are calling them back, that you are drawing them back. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for families, Lord God, and for people who have been so diligent in their serving and investing into the house of God, who have given their everything to serve and follow you. Father, I pray your blessing upon them. Nothing returns void when it is given to you. And so, God, I pray, Lord God, God, for there to come increase, Lord God, and fruitfulness, Lord God. God, there's going to come such a rush of fruitfulness into your house. God, that these, that this building won't be able to contain, Lord God, that the lives of people here won't be able to contain it, but there'll be nothing else but to do, but to share of the fruit and of the goodness and of the things that you have done in the lives of people here. Father, I pray, Lord God, for the youth ministry of this house, Lord God. God, I pray, Lord God, let it continue, Lord God, to reach out and to change lives, Lord God. God, that at the very uh, early stages of life, Lord God, that young people's lives are going to be impacted and affected by the gospel and the message of Jesus Christ, that this church will continue to be a sending church, a church that doesn't just support missions, but it sends missions. It sends people out into this world to see lives change change, to see hearts turned around. Father, there's going to come an outpouring of fruitfulness and of finance into this house, Lord God. I pray and I speak into the board and the leadership of this house, Lord God. God, let there come great vision and expectation for what you're going to do in this place. I prophesy into the lives and to the altars that they will be filled with people who need to know the message of Jesus Christ. I speak into the, the worship and the praise of this house. Let it continue to lift up your name, to lift it up because when you are lifted up, I said, church, when you are lifted up, you will draw all men unto you. That this will be a house that draws people in. It draws people in from the highways and the byways, from the communities, that people will be drawn into this place, that they will find you at these altars, that their lives will be set apart, turn around, set free, and going ahead in the things of Jesus. Father, I thank you for Emerged Church. I thank you for what you are doing. And I have gratitude in my heart for what this church is going to do. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Fantastic. We're going to do a couple of things right now, but I want you to look and watch the video. I want to say a huge thank you, Pastor Jonathan, for being such a fun-loving and kind person to work with. One of the things I admire about you the most is your ability to bring laughs and joy and life to every situation, no matter what, and also your sensitivity to the Holy Spirit and how you include Him in everything that you do. I'm definitely going to miss you and working with you, and I wish you and your family all the best. And I can't wait to see what God does, not only through you, but for you. 
Hi Jonathan and family, um, I just wanted to say that I'm really sad that you guys are going. Uh, my first memory of meeting up with Jonathan was for coffee at Clean Skin and he walked me through some really great leadership stuff. Uh, what started out as a, a bit of a kind of work thing turned into a real friendship. So uh, just really sad that you guys are going, but really super excited about what's going to happen in your future and I'm looking forward to that free holiday in Adelaide. Come on. G'day Jonathan, Joe and kids. I just want to say, uh, talk to you on behalf of the board and just to say thank you so much for all your service. You've been such a blessing to us. And Jonathan, your work on the board, it, you've been wonderful. You've been the man on the ground here and done so many things behind the scenes and you've been so faithful, all of you. We thank you so much for your faithfulness in God's house and I just really believe God's going to bless you for that in your next season and just appreciate you so much. Bless you guys. You're one in a billion. JB, what are we going to do? And Pastor Mark's in those meetings and he says we're going to put on a summit or we're going to do this or we're going to do that. How are we going to get from the idea to the thing actually happening without you here? Oh, I don't know. I don't know that we can let you leave. I think we might have to, uh, I don't know. We just, we just can't let that happen. Anyway, more seriously, look, JB, thank you for all you've put into the church over all the years. Just the fun and laughter that you brought into the house. All the structure, all the things you put in place so that we've got our procedures in place as we go forward. Just a big thanks. And yes, of course we wish you well. We're just blessed you know, this next season of your life. Have a great time. Bye. Jonathan, thank you so much for being a part of our lives here at Emerge. We are going to miss you guys so much. Especially Joe, I am going to miss you and uh, your amazing creative skills um, and the love that you pour into everything you do. Um, yeah, no, no one is better at doing that than you. So. Thank you so much and I can't wait to visit you in Adelaide. Bye. JB, Joe and the kids. Well, I can't really believe that we're filming this. It feels to have come around so quick. Um, but what I love about you guys is not just what you do not all the things that you bring to church which is loads but it's really who you are you've just made me and neil feel so welcome at church joe i'm going to miss our cups of tea and talking about films and um, all the different things that we do and jonathan i'm just going to miss you so much around the office so keep your phone on because i probably will be calling you and um yeah safe journeys down to adelaide we love you guys and we're going to miss you so much Hey Pastor Jonathan, just want to say thank you for all you've done over the years in my life and in the church. I can honestly say that so many areas of the church wouldn't be where they are today if it wasn't for the time and effort that you put in. And what we do in the future as a merged church is going to be because of what you did, what you laid as those foundations for us. Uh, Joe, I'm going to miss your cooking and the food that you put out for us uh, on those creative nights. They were so, so good, always left so full. And uh, Owen and Harper are going to miss you guys too. Can't wait to come and visit you guys in Adelaide. And by then, Owen, I reckon you'll be almost as tall as me. We'll play some basketball. Hey, JB. Just want to say a huge thank you for all the time that we've spent together, the times that we've gone away overseas. Thank you for taking me on missions trips. Right now, I just want to say that we are praying for you, praying for God's blessing on this next chapter of your lives for both you and your family. Hey, Jonathan, Joe, Owen and Harper. Uh, sad to see you guys going, but it has been such an honour and a privilege uh, to get to know you, to be part of your life. And it's been so awesome to have you guys there as a part of my life as well. So from Yovana and I, we wish you all the best. Uh, God bless you as you go down to Adelaide. And I know that they are going to receive an amazing gift uh, in yourself, Jonathan, but also you guys as a family. Uh, Jonathan, I want to appreciate you right now for your genuine interest, care and love that you have shown me. I value our time on Tuesday morning uh, that we do there and all the endless coffees that you have shouted me. And uh, I hope in the future that we'll bump into each other quite often and continue to do life together as we build God's kingdom, which I know is your number one passion. So I honour you for that. I respect you. You're an amazing example. And I can't wait to see you in the future. And if not on earth, in heaven for sure. Bless you, man. And I love you guys as a family a lot. Hey, guys. Well, here we are. I actually wrote a poem for you, but it's too long to do now. So I have just written a little snippet of my heart to yours, which explains what the poem's about, really. So here we go. It's about coffee and cushions and Macca's runs 
how much I will miss you and all that you've done. Your family so precious, each one in my heart, will be treasured and missed as you make a new start. I love you all and I smile to think of your future in the big scheme of things. As you venture out to stay the course, to be guided by light for His glory, of course. Love you guys heaps. I'm going to miss you so much. My shelter, my shelter. So I went too early with the shelter. Shout Come on, Emerge Church, sing along with us. Shout to the Lord of the earth. Praise to the King. Mountains. Mountains bow down and the sea. With our hands, that's it. You got it. See you later. Oops. Have fun. Thank you. Bye. Hallelujah. It's like you're rapping right now. Woo. That was good. Then sings my soul. I say. That's messy. Thanks, Julie. See ya. Glory. Whoa. So let's sing along. Bella. Dio ti benedico. Dico tutto ti ti. Fantastic. I'd like the board and the staff, if you could come, Jonathan, your family, if you could come to the front. We're just going to pray for them. Uh, that, that video just makes me laugh. And that last picture, just Jonathan and myself, just sitting at the couch, just kind of like laughing. It just kind of, uh, it just says what work and life's been about. I mean, I love the church. I love doing what I do. But it's because we do it with great people. And uh, Jonathan and Joe have been exactly that. They've just been great people. We're going to pray for them. We're going to give them gifts. Why don't you just stand? And I want you to extend a hand. And we're just going to pray. Father, we thank you. Just as the message that we just heard. Father, Lord, we come with gratefulness, oh God. Father, for the fact that you sent to us for a time, Jonathan and Joe, Father Owen and Harper, Lord. Father, I thank you that they have been a blessing to us, oh God. Father, not only have they been great friends, not only have they, Father, done good things, oh Lord, but Father, we have seen things happen for your kingdom, oh God. Father, it's not been about just individual people, oh God, Father, but it's been about the whole kingdom, oh Lord. And Father, though our hearts are sad that they are going to go on, oh Lord, Father, we also know that this is your will and that you are going to take them into their next place, oh God. Father, Lord, when they came, in many ways, there was such, such youthfulness or youngness around them, O oh Lord. Father, and while they've been here, O oh Lord, in so many ways, there's been growth. And Father, I prophesy that once again, that but from this point, O oh God, 
growth will happen, O oh Lord. There would be an increase, O oh Lord, of talents and abilities, O oh Lord. And that it wouldn't just be doing the same, but it would be doing something new in a new place, O oh God. And Father, new skills and abilities would come to the fore. Father, I pray that you would anoint Jonathan, Father, in the name of Jesus. Let leadership come upon him, O oh God. Father, as he takes that role within the state executive of the ACC in South Australia, let him bring wisdom and, and Father, to many pastors, O oh God, and, and around the place, O oh God. Father, use him for that, O oh God. Father, I pray for Joe. Father, Lord, use her love. Use her gifts, use her hospitality, use, oh God, her heart for people, oh Lord. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, I speak, God, that, Father, in her workplace, oh God, that she would start to see great fruitfulness, oh Lord. Father, and that people would come to Christ out of her witness, oh God. Father, I also speak wholeness and healing over her right now. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, we speak against this condition. We come against it right now in the name of Jesus. Full and total healing, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for Owen. Father, let him go out to be a great man of God. Father, spoil him for the things of this world. Let the gifts and abilities that are within him, oh God. Father, Lord, Father, take him forward in the name of Jesus. Let him make new friends, oh God. Father, we ask that in Jesus' name. Father, we just pray for Harper. Father, what a blessing, what a heart she has, what a unique personality, what a drive, what a leadership mantle is on her life, oh God. And I pray that you would just take her, Father. Bless her, oh Lord. Father, Lord, where she's a bit sad or scared and has to face new things, oh God. Father, be with her. Let her know, oh God. Father, you're with her all the time. Father, let a blessing, Father, be upon them, oh God. Father, Lord, and let our, Father, church, oh God, Father, move forward, oh God, Father, in testament and in honor to what they have bought and what they have put in place, oh God. Father, our greatest days are ahead of us, oh God, Father, because of the faithfulness of the servants that you have sent to us, oh Lord. And Father, we thank you, oh God. We thank you for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. After the service tonight, uh, after the service uh, this morning and also tonight, someone's going to be around going with a, like a video camera, so you'll be able to say your own personal thank you uh, to Jonathan and Joe, and, and we'll make sure that we get that. We're going to receive a love offering, as I've told you before. Everything you give in this offering is going to go towards Pastor Jonathan and his family. Uh, and I think we've got some gifts as well. Have we got some gifts, Julie? We have got, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> uh. One of the things I, I must I say is I haven't said this is Pastor Jonathan's last message because Jonathan will definitely be preaching here again uh, over the next little while for sure. So, fantastic. Come on, let's give him one last hand. We need the band. We're going to finish with a song. Get your offering ready. You can, be, you can just be seated again. We're going to finish with a song. Get your offering ready. I think there's uh, slips that you can do. Uh, let's be generous to them. And uh, we're going to finish with a, a praise song. Is that all right? We're going to finish with a thankfulness song. And Julie wants to tell me something. You're already taking over from Jonathan, telling me what i got to do. He's not even, this, it's not even cold yet. Oh, the, there is cake. We get to have cake in the function room as well. Come on, once you give and stand. I know meeting's gone on way longer, but that was always going to happen, eh? Hey? <laughs> Fantastic. God bless you. Wonderful. Sorry, Jason. Come on, Jason. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, God bless you. Once you give in, why don't you stand? We're going to sing. See you tonight. I'm going to do part two of what I started last week. <laughs> Let's sing Breaking Up. Breaking Up.